Hello there everybody, welcome to another video. My name is Nicolette at the Mutra Makeup channel. Um, I just wanted to say hello, how are you guys? Hope everyone is having a good week, good day, all of that. I hope you guys also enjoyed the Amy Winehouse video that dropped earlier this week. If you haven't seen it, I'm gonna link it right here so that you guys can go ahead and watch that as well. But today is a bonus episode for this week. Welcome everybody. So I'm a big fan of all sorts of music. I've said this over and over again in my other videos. And I just want to expand, talk more about different musicians and with Halloween coming up as well, I want to push myself to create more and more different looks. So this week, like you're seeing now, we're doing another bonus look and for the next few weeks, there's also going to be more bonus looks that focus around, well, what the thumbnail says the band KISS. Today we are going to recreate Gene Simmons's, 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 yes, Simmons's iconic look from the band KISS while we discuss a few different facts about Gene. Over the next few weeks, we are also going to be showcasing the rest of the members, including Peter Chris, Paul Stanley, and Ace Freely. So Definitely stay tuned over the next few weeks and you can see how we create all of their looks. But today is Gene Simmons, so let me stop boring you with this intro and let's go ahead and get started. So the first step to really anything that you do with your face is washing your face. Today I decided to use the Laura Vera Skin Easy Going Daily Cleanser. I just did a light rinse of my face and here I am. The next step is moisturizing your face. As today you will see, we are going to be using a lot of powder. So make sure that you are hydrated and ready to roll. Today I used my CeraVe Daily Moisturizing Lotion for someone who has a lot of eczema. This is a great product to use. I will always suggest it. CeraVe has been really good to me. I also use a lot of Innisfree as well, but for today I'm using the CeraVe since it is a lighter formula and it's less greasy. So after we have moisturized our face and we look very good and glowing, I am going to go in and start off with my Ben Nye Clown White Face Paint. I got the super big jug. I'll let you know by the last video how much I have left so that you can know for yourself if it's worth buying this big of a jug, especially if you're gonna do this look once or twice in your lifetime. I'll keep you posted. For sanitary purposes as well, I am just going to cut out a piece. Yes, I'm using a knife. Yes, I probably should have done the shaving method. It is what it is. And I am going to put it on my little palette here. I find that this will probably be a lot easier to work with as opposed to double dipping my sponge in here. I just, I've never been that type of person who enjoys dipping and then having your face oils in there and then if I want to use it for with somebody else then I can't it's just very limiting so that is what we're going to do from here we are going to go full fledged you're going to want to focus your white paint in this area around here around here and around here okay okay I have a just a little bitty sponge you can use any sponge that you want you can also use your fingers if you want I'm trying to reduce my intake of being dirty dirty, so I'm just going to go in with the sponge to apply the white all over my face. Ah! So Gene Simmons, right? Let's talk about him while I dab up my face over here. <laughs> Gene Simmons was actually born by the name of Chime Wits, C-H-A-I-M-W-I-T-Z. Um, I am probably saying it wrong and I do apologize by that, about that. He was actually born in Haifa, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly as well, in Haifa, Israel. He was born to his mother, whose name was Florence. If you followed Gene Simmons over the years, you will know that Florence was a very big person in his life. He talked about her very, very frequently and I think she just passed away within the last year or so. So yeah, she's been, she's been a big staple for him growing up. His mother was born in Hungary and she actually survived a Nazi concentration camp along with her brother. 
she was the only person along with her brother to survive in her family so talk about a very i guess historical family and a just tough upbringing in general i can only imagine i think having a family member who's gone through something like that um and just you know seeing how that kind of affects you growing up when you know what your parents have been through it was said that Jean grew up very, very poor in his early life. He has said on different occasions that him and his family would kind of scrape by to make a living, trying to live off of bread, milk, things like that. At the age of seven, he actually started picking wild fruit off of the street, and he would sell the wild fruit off the streets in Israel. So... Yeah, definitely a very tough upbringing um, from, I would say, most people, you know, it just seems very, very difficult, very, very, very difficult. And I think that also, you know, as you hear more of the story, as I speak more, you'll see how that kind of contributes to, I think, a child growing up and just trying to do the absolute best that they can to make ends meet for them and their family. But yeah. Basically, like I said, he would sell fruit on the corner of the street. He would find them, pick them, all of that, and just, you know, sell them off. You know, seven-year-old kid. Crazy. This is going to be just about as white as you want to get. Oh my god, I got a niche. Oh. From here, we're going to go into basically shaping it and making it what we need it to be. So I'm going to go in from here with a... Just a general eyeliner. The one that I'm going to be using today is going to be Bad Gal Bang Eye Pencil from Benefit Cosmetics. And what we're going to basically do is draw it out. We are going to draw out our face so that that way we have something to go off of. So I'm going to try and talk through this. Um, I'm sure I'll be able to do a little bit of talking, but maybe not as much as I would like. Because this is going to require some focusing. I'm going to start off with the Widow's Peak because I feel like that's going to give me a good sense of direction. His Widow's Peak looks to start just about right here. Basically that. It's not very good, but it's okay. From here, I'm just going to fast forward through this as I patiently try to carve out my face. Um, it's going to be very hard for me to do some talking between this, so just... Here is some quick fast forward of me doing this. So at the age of eight years old, he and his mother immigrated from Israel to New York City. His father ended up not coming with them and he ended up adopting the name Eugene Klein upon arrival to the United States. Um, Eugene was just the name that he chose, and then Klein was actually his mother's maiden name. It was said that at an early, early age, he picked up a guitar and would practice hours and hours and hours upon end. It was something that he really, really, really enjoyed. He also really enjoyed comic books, starting out as a little youngster. As he grew up and got older, he was described as a excellent typist and went on to become a editor-in-chief at Vogue. So that's pretty interesting, something I did not know while I was doing my research. And for a stint, he also did work as a sixth grade teacher on the Upper East Side in New York City. The next step of what you're going to want to do is basically erase. So everything that's going to be in this little like eye area, up area, you're going to want to erase and perfect with a Q-tip. So what I'm just doing is basically going in and doing just like this, boom, cleaning it out. Because if you try to add black onto white, um, it's going to be gray. So you don't want it gray, you want it to be a very true black color. So we're just gonna take Q-tips galore and just clean this out basically. So now let's get into the fun stuff about Gene, right? How did Sir Gene Simmons become the rock god that he is now? Well, I'm glad that you asked. As he was growing up, he was in a lot of different bands. Um, it is a common thing when you are trying to become a musician to be in bands. I know, I know, shocker. <laughs> uh, 
Um, he, his very first band was a band by the name of Lynx, which at the time was actually called Missing Lynx. Didn't really work out with them. So he moved on with another band called the Long Island Sounds. As we know, that did not work out. So then from there, he moved on to another band and that band's name was the Bullfrog Beer, B-H-E-E-R. That too did not work out. And then from there, he moved on to another band and that band was called Wicked Lester. And that was in 1970. And that band did not work out, but he did get one good thing out of the band, and that was working with a man by the name of Paul Stanley. If you're familiar with the band Kiss, Paul Stanley is actually the front man of the band. He is the guy with the star on the face. So from here, we've wrapped up that process. What we're going to do next is basically set everything in place. And what we're gonna use is the RCMA translucent powder. What you can use is really any other powder. I like this powder because it's just overall really good. Um, but you're open to of course use any other powder that your heart desires. I would just suggest one that has no color um, or that is white. A white setting powder will also work since we are technically setting the white right now. For those of you guys who are unfamiliar with makeup and maybe are just doing this for fun, hobby, etc. This is actually a step that is pretty darn important throughout the process um, only because it helps everything stay in place and you know what I just realized I didn't do the widow's peak so let me do that real quick and I'll continue powdering. But yes it's a very important step to just make sure that everything stays in place throughout your entire day performance whatever it is that you have essentially this face paint and makeup on. So very important step. Yes, my skin does feel very dry right now. So I will say, as I said before, make sure you moisturize before you do this look because it's gonna be very imperative to make sure that your skin is okay afterwards. <laughs> we are going to add some more powder later on. So I think that that should suffice for as much powder as it is that we need. So the next step that we're going to take is doing the black and filling in the black. We're gonna use Ben Nye's Cream Black Tone. I, once again, use my little knife and put that on my little palette for just easier application. And the way that we're going to apply it is with a brush. I am going to be using just a regular angled brush, dip that in there, and then just outline everything first again with this black tone, and then we're going to fill it in. So the outline is going to be just tricky, so we're going to fast forward through this as well. So when we ended off, we ended off at Wicked Lester and the meeting of Paul Stanley. From there, they actually ended up getting a record deal with Epic Records with the band, and Paul and Gene, both of them, did not find the chemistry with the rest of the bandmates. They tried to let them go and say, hey, you gotta get out of the band, but they both weren't budging, so they were like, screw this then, we're both going to resign from this band. So that's exactly what they did. They resigned from the band, went on their own happy merry way in hopes that they would get another record deal with somebody else because obviously Epic Records did not work out. So here they are, off on their own, ready to explore life, find a new band, all of that jazz. And from there, they basically had a pact to each other and they said that they wanted to go forward and create the ultimate band. And that is exactly what they did. So now that I have wrapped up doing the outside line, I am just going to begin the process of filling everything in. This is probably the best part because <laughs> you know you're getting close. From there, they found an ad in the paper that was actually for Peter Chris. It was a drummer who was in the area who was looking for work and they were like, all right, let's respond, cool. And they put him in the band immediately thereafter. And from there, they started doing performances as a trio. Their ultimate band was slowly coming together. The last person that was going to contribute and become a part of the band was Ace Freely. And Ace Freely actually also replied to a ad that the band had actually posted for a lead guitarist. 
And boom, there he was. Now he was in the band. What I personally find super funny is that this is actually a very common way back in the day for people to find members of their bands. I know I read Ozzy Osbourne's book and Ozzy Osbourne talked about how he met certain band members via basically an ad in the paper. And then also Elton John ended up finding his writer Bernie Toppin in the paper as well. He just responded to something and was like, hey, you know, let's try this out and boom. I mean, it, to me, it's just funny. Nowadays, it's completely different. It would totally be something like, okay, are you on Instagram? I found you on Instagram via your hashtags. So to me, I thought that was so dope and so interesting. In February of 1974, they released their very first self-titled album, Kiss. Gene was said to take his inspo for his look from a comic book, which was the black bolt and that was his inspo he was like yo i'm gonna get my look from this let's go ahead and recreate it and that's exactly what he did everybody else had their own inspos for their own looks which we'll get into in future videos but for gene it was the black bolt he was a big fan of comic books for years he actually worked at a comic book store for a little bit as well and he's just been big on the comic book scene. It has been said that he has published also several science fiction fanzines as well, so it all makes sense branding-wise. He now currently lives in the Los Angeles area with his wife, Miss Shannon Tweed. They have two children together and they are just doing their thing. They were actually dating, if you weren't aware of this, since 1983 and they didn't marry for 28 years. As he would say, they were happily unmarried. He frequently would paraphrase Groucho Marx in saying that marriage is an institution and he didn't want to live in an institution. TBH, I feel him completely, but you know, that's just a personal thing. Gene Simmons can also speak a variety of different languages, including Hungarian, German, English, Hebrew, as well as some Japanese. He doesn't drink, he doesn't do drugs, and he has said this before, he has never drank and he's never done drugs. So to me, he's just something else. I am telling you, I have loved him since the beginning of time for many, many reasons. So something that I want to try as I go is to basically set it. Um, I'm gonna use that same translucent powder. You can also use black powder and just sprinkle it on. And as you see, it didn't change the color. I just want to set it because I'm very sweaty right now and I don't want it to start melting away. So something I have always been told and taught is that eyebrows are sisters, they're not twins. So in this case, they're basically similar, but they're a little bit different. It's going to be like that. Don't beat yourself up, do what you can. And if you have more angled brushes, then you can always kind of add more color where it's needed. But now I'm just going to go back after I have wrapped up doing this side and just add. When you're doing this step, it's very tough at times to make sure you don't spread the color. Um, even if you did pack it the right way, sometimes it does transfer. So just go slow, go slow. And that's it. Just kidding. So when it comes to the eyes, something that I would prefer doing is black eyeshadow because I feel like it's a lot safer. So since we've already put powder on it, I'm just going to wrap up the eyes with black eyeshadow. Something that you can also consider when you're doing this look is you can use black, black powder to set all of this black area in place. I just chose to do the, the translucent powder instead, um, just because I felt like that was a little bit easier for me. But if you do have black powder, that is a option that you also do have. And as you can see, this really puts it all into place and it helps maintain that sense of darkness um, on the eye without, you know, exposing you to the potential of irritation. Also in the areas that you do feel like you did play yourself a little bit, don't hesitate to add some black if you want to it to just make sure that it's all 
in place in any of those other additional spots and then also you can also take white as well and just add it into those areas where maybe you made a mistake or you feel like the powder didn't um, do what you wanted it to do that's another option for you as well if you want to open up your eyes a little bit more then you can always put on some mascara i don't know how much of a difference it's going to make but we can go ahead and try that not a crazy difference that it's making but there is a slight one that i do feel like is existent so i guess that is good and then the very last step of our day today is going in with a black lipstick. So I'm going to use Max black lipstick. I personally really like um, mattes. I prefer mattes, I think, over anything. So I'm using their matte lipstick in Caviar, and I'm just going to apply that on my lips from here. I will say this is the first time that I am using this black matte and I will say off the bat, I don't know how it is when I eat, but it is a very true authentic black. Some blacks that you do get do have undertones of like a green or a purple or a blue. This looks black, so that is awesome and it does fit well with the Ben Nye and it has a very good tone that goes with it together. But this basically finishes off the look. This is everything that you would need to create this look. I will include everything that we did use in the description box down below. So just in case you guys do wanna make those purchases, they will be down there. As of now, I suggest everything. If there were any tips that I could give for you guys for this look is go slow go slow. It's probably easier if you're doing it on somebody else than maybe if it is on yourself, but for someone who is doing this for the second time, you know, there's still work that needs to be done, but you know, it's a work in progress. So long as you have clean tools, you're aware of your space, you make sure your hands stay fairly clean so that you don't double dip on something on accident and accidentally touch your face. Um, I think you should be pretty much good to go. I think I would go to a party like this, even though there's a few little hiccups that I do notice, I still would go out. I think it looks dope. I love Gene Simmons and it's great. So the last thing that I'm gonna do just to wrap it up is there is a reason why people with curly hair don't brush their hair. And that reason is because it looks a mess, but perks to curly hair, right? Just brush it out, do a little bit of this and there you go. This sums up our look. This is it. Brush your hair out, make it look crazy, add curls if your hair is naturally straight, and then brush the poop out of it, tease it, do all of that, and here you are. This is the Gene Simmons inspired look that we've got today. Make sure to hit that like button, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and we'll be back next week. We'll be probably doing a Paul Stanley or Ace Freely. I haven't decided which one yet, but next week we will be doing them. So if you're interested in some facts about them, if you're interested in just seeing how to do that makeup, definitely make sure you subscribe because we will be back. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, enjoying this video, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys. See ya. And if there's any looks that you're interested in, definitely comment them down below because I would like to hear from you. All right. See ya.